Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And our guest today is a woman who's been one of the leading filmmakers here in Germany for not much short of three decades now. And she is Doris Derrier. Doris, thank you very, very much for joining us on Talking Germany. Thanks. Now, Doris Derrier hasn't just made more than 20 movies. She's also written novels, short stories and children's books. And I, for one, am a big fan of her much-talked-about work in recent years as an opera director. <laughs> I was uh, very intrigued to read that you are apparently a shy person. I how am. Can, I am. You, you are. Oh, how, yeah. can, how can shy people make movies? Well, I'm behind <laughs> the camera. I'm usually not in front of the camera, and I do find it hard to be in front of the camera. I usually wear my sunglasses. You have to work with people. I mean, you have to really get out there and confront people. Yeah, yeah but it's a very private thing. Very it's very intimate. Thing. When you work with actors, it's a very intimate thing. So mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm probably quite schizophrenic. There's the, the public side of me and yeah. the private side, and the, the public side is, okay. is where I'm very shy. You're shy. You're yes. a filmmaker. <laughs> are, you, are you a German filmmaker? Are you a typical German filmmaker? Is there such a thing? Are you one? I don't know. You tell me. Am I? I don't German know. filmmakers. Well, what do German... I mean, you travel a lot. What do people outside Germany say about German filmmakers to you? What impression do they give you? And oh, I'll well, you, you know, I recently, um, I think the, the, the scale um, of German films has really widened and there are many different films. But in the old days, when mm. the new German cinema came out, it was conceived as being very uh, Teutonic, very um, dark. Very cerebral. Cerebral. Mm. And it was pretty inconceivable. A German comedy, for instance, was pretty inconceivable. A contradiction <laughs> of terms. It and exists what, now, though. It exists. Well, I started it with men. So that was one of the reasons why so I that's got your, that So that's much your big attention. claim to fame. You started the German <laughs> comedy after the no, serious after new the, German cinema, yeah? Yeah, but, of course, there was a long tradition of German comedy in the 30s. Sure. And that was completely, you know, extinguished and the filmmakers murdered. And um, that's why there was this huge gap after the war, because the filmmakers of the 30s were dead or immigrated to, for instance, the US. OK. Um, so we've discovered that Doris Duria started the new, new German cinema with comedies involved. Uh, she's got a new movie out. <laughs> Doris Duria, let's uh, follow that message and live in the present. Let's talk about your latest movie. We heard about it there, The Hairdresser. One critic I was reading wrote something that caught my eye. He said, basically, hairdressers and filmmakers have pretty similar jobs. They, uh, they listen to stories and they tell them to others. Is that the way you see it? Yeah, and uh, the cut is important, the editing. The editing is important. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. Um, you're talking about this, uh, this whole thing about... Uh, it's a social comedy, your yes, movie, yeah? yeah? Where, do you, where do you get your inspiration for that? Where you've got the German social comedy. Have you been watching comedies from other parts of the world as well? Yeah. yeah? I'm being told that it's very rare to have a German social comedy because usually it's a, the British social comedy that uh, I was wondering is very widespread and, and yeah. well-known. Yeah. And I did watch a lot of those films. Uh -huh before and especially in order to prepare for this one, for this mm -hmm. film. And I think we Germans um, have the slight tendency, <laughs> to be polite, to be a bit condescending when condescending. the lower class... Yes, when the lower class is concerned. Oh, I see, yeah. Germany can be a divided society. And... You know, there's, a, there's a real sort of sense of us and them. There's yeah, the elite, yeah. the academic circles, and then there's them. Right, yeah. and with this one, I really try to always be aware of, of exactly this problem and not to be condescending or patronising. Was that difficult always... for you? No, but it's a, it's a, it's <laughs> I mean, a certain style. I mean, you come from a middle-class family yourself or, or a solid middle-class family. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but to never, ever you turn somebody like my, my leading lady, the hairdresser without a job, you know, who's down her luck, never to turn her into a victim mm -hmm. is the centre of the story. And, yeah. and also maybe the the message, if there is one, I'm very aware of messages, but to never have her be the victim. And she is quite un-German because she's very optimistic. Although mm -hmm. she, she's down out on her luck, she decides every day to be happy. It's mm -hmm. a decision. Mm -hmm. Very she, German, right? <laughs> you keep saying, see, saying she. It's a strong female lead. Yeah. It was made by you, a lady. Uh, the script was written by a woman. Is it a woman's movie? Yeah, it might be more interesting for women. Mm. 
I don't know, there's a lot of naked flesh in it, so. Naked flesh? <laughs> Women's really? flesh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The fat lady is naked <laughs> a, a lot, not a lot of times, but in some scenes. So okay. I don't know, it might have, it might have broader appeal. But you, um, I'm, I'm You've, be, you've been making films for, uh, I said nearly three decades. In our report, we said over three decades. It's certainly a long time. Your first movie was in when? Your, your very, very, <laughs> You're really very, very first movie. You were trying to nail movie. me down, huh? yeah? In 76. Okay. I was still in film school. And, and it was a documentary for theatrical release. Yeah. And in that period, how have, how have you developed? Oh, no. No. I hope I, I do I don't have want developed. To ask you how your movies are developed. How have you developed personally. in that period? Yeah, personally. I don't know. I hope I know. have developed at all. You hope you have? Yes. You're not sure, though? No. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> are we getting better as we go along? I don't know. I mean, when you're young, you think when you are older, you get wiser and smarter, and I don't know what. Yeah, yeah. But it's not Shakespeare true, is says it? somewhere, don't get older before you are wiser, more or less, in King Lear, <laughs> something like that. Are you wiser than you once were? I don't know. I think I was the wise, wisest when I was five. Five? Yes. Four That's the, the age of the philosopher, the philosopher's age, from four to six, I would okay. say. You know a little bit about this. You featured this, uh, the, 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 the Polish aspect, yes, the Polish yeah, challenge right to the German there. hairdresser. It was shot right there yeah. in your movie. So yeah. what, what did you learn about that situation? Well, the hairdresser, my leading lady, she goes to Poland in order to smuggle illegal Vietnamese across the border. She needs money, so she would do anything. In order to open up her hair salon, she would do anything. So she smuggles she do, she's Vietnamese. She's people trafficking. Yeah, people trafficking. Uh -huh. And uh, she ends up in this town, mm -hmm. and she is shocked to see that there are zillions of hair salons all around. <laughs> uh, the, the, it's the, a comedy, I should it's say. It's a comedy, exactly. Yeah. So, so that's an interesting situation to try and construe. Uh, tell me this, the, the, the lady in question, the hairdresser, she's from East Berlin. Mm -hmm. yeah? How much did that play? How, how difficult was it for you to get under her skin, to get into her sort of location, as it were, her milieu? Well, for me, it was uh, quite exotic because I had never really been to the East. Mm. Uh, I'm You're from a Munich. Vesi. You're what I'm, Germans call yeah. a Vesi, yeah. a Westerner. So I tried to be just as open and curious um, as, um, you know, as I was when I went to Japan in order to shoot uh, cherry blossoms. Mm -hmm. And I asked a lot of stupid questions. And, um, mm. That's the way to go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I tried to just you know, listen and, and watch and... Mm -hmm which I do consider to be um, mainly my, my job, to listen and to watch and then to report. Uh, how much of a film is... It's, it's a film about present... It's about what's happening in Germany right now, about a country where there are sort of us and them. Is that yeah, fair? There, there is a big economic crisis, of course, and it's getting bigger by the minute. Yeah. But to show a person who is not getting you know, totally depressed by it and who who tries to you know, just fight it every day and to tries to keep optimistic about it and to try and who tries to not let herself being defined entirely by the economical circumstances. She gets humiliated. There's that awful oh, yeah. scene where, you yeah. know, what, what, what's the quote? I actually wrote it down, the English version. Hairdressing is all about being aesthetically pleasing and you aren't aesthetically pleasing. Yes. It's an awful yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah, it is very awful. She's reduced completely. She's reduced. She's, uh, yeah, she's uh, completely destroyed. But she picks herself up and she counts her blessings, and she continues, mm. which is uh, not the usual thing to do. The hairdresser, uh, German movies, uh, women's movies, why aren't there more German film directors who are women? Well, in TV, there are. Ah. But in the film industry, we still deal with a whole lot of money, and the big budgets are still a um, boys' game. Mm. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of difficult to break into the, the big budgets. I don't really need those super big budgets, but um, you don't find very Your many Your films are getting smaller and smaller in scale, aren't they, really, as you go along? Not really, no. I, I, oh, I have the, the same the kind of budget. The no, the same kind of budget, but it's not, they're not super expensive. You know, they're not $150 million movies, not okay. at all. So you're a woman in a, in a man's world, in the world of, uh, certainly a, a world that's dominated by men still, from what you're saying, yeah, filmmaking. You're also a, uh, a shy person. That's perhaps typical for northern Germans, Germaners. The people yeah. in Germany, uh, mm -hmm. there's this divide. The north are, are very shy, cool, analytic. The people in the south are 
more passionate. It's quite typical for show people, for people who, buy, who work in the industry, as they mm -hmm. call it, in Los Angeles. People who are on stage a lot and who work in the entertainment business yeah. are shy a lot. Okay, let's just... <laughs> you live in Bavaria, yeah? Mm -hmm. I want to go down to one place where you, 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 you live in the country in Bavaria, you live in the town. But, uh, Doris lives in uh, Munich, the capital of Bavaria. You've, you'll have heard about it. And one place where she likes to hang out when she's writing scripts is the legendary Hofbräuhaus Beer Hall in, the, in Munich. Let's just have a look at a couple of uh, images of this uh, place where... The, there it is, the exterior. This is what it looks like. Uh, there are plenty of tourists there. It's a place where you get quite a mix, though. There's the musicians. You can see... Uh, plenty of locals too. Uh, the history of the place goes back four centuries. And, oh, there's some typical uh, Bavarian dancing. And uh, I'm told that we've got some shots of where the locals actually lock up their tankards uh, <laughs> so that you, um, when you can, there you go, so that when they come back next time, they're going to find their tankard. You really go here. I drag my students to the Hofbräuhaus House every you take year. Your students here? Yes, every year. What's the purpose the first of that? semester. Uh -huh. has to do a, a writing exercise at the Hofbräuhaus, House. And I send them out. <laughs> they have to if, sit down with the Bavarian locals, Bavarian dinosaurs. They come out of their holes in winter. And uh -huh. they go to the Hofbräuhaus, House <laughs> and they have amazing stories to tell. Mm -hmm. And usually the students are very shy, again, in the beginning. And they um, are... Uh, Every year, they are completely enthralled, mesmerized, and overwhelmed wow. by the stories that they hear. Wow. Okay, let's stay in Bavaria. There's one... Uh, I mentioned that Doris li uh, lives partly in Munich, in the, in the capital of Bavaria. She also lives in the Allgäu. It's r that's right up in the mountains, in the Alps. Uh, picture mountains, cows, beautiful green alpine meadows, and something else close to Doris's heart, Buddhist monks. And that very special, special effect uh, leads right into my next question. Have you ever experienced nirvana? No. <laughs> I'm not a very enlightened being. <laughs> but it's not about enlightenment or nirvana, I think. It's about you know, the practice of trying to enjoy every moment and to try to say, well, every moment can be a wonderful moment. Uh, I was just asking you while, while we were watching that report whether you are a Buddhist, whether you describe yourself as a Buddhist, and then you sort of turned the question on me a little bit and asked me whether I'm a Buddhist. I mean, that's how it ended up. What would you say? Are you, are, are you a Buddhist? When people meet you, would you say, I am a Buddhist? No, because, you know, the minute you say it, it's, it's just another concept. And since Buddhism tries to stay away from concepts, mm. I don't think I am or try to be... Not, I try to not, you know, fit into mm. categories or try to to put myself into a category. Sure, but, but Buddhism does mean, I mean, the, the, the practice you are describing, it does mean quite a lot to you. I mean, I don't want to sort of pry in any way. I know that in a difficult phase in your life, you came to Buddhism and it, and it helped you an awful lot. I often think the interesting question is not why somebody comes to something, but why somebody stays with something. Yeah, well, the very healing uh, effect of um, what I learned you know, back then when I confronted Buddhism for the first time was to be told to just sit down and, and shut up, oh. which is something that I find difficult to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> for me to, to sit down and shut up, uh -huh. to sit on that cushion and shut up. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I, I keep trying to do. I'm a very sloppy practitioner, I must say, but whenever I do do it on a, on a uh, daily basis, uh, basis, it's, it's good for me. It, mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> You've travelled a lot in Asia. Asia's become quite important to you. Mm. Yeah, I think two or three of your movies actually feature Japan. Yeah. Tell and me I about shot Japan. a movie in a monastery, a Zen monastery. That's true, which I haven't seen, but a I will run away guaranteed. and see it now. It's really... I've noticed that one, that that one is missing. Um, but tell me about Japan. You, see, you made an interesting comment. You actually compared Japan with Germany. It's had the very similar countries. Yeah. I think I know what you mean, but I'm not sure. Historically, we're linked because sure. you know, we both lost the war. Yeah. We both had this huge economical uh, surge in the 50s. Um, it, both countries have been very, very wealthy and they're now in their economical decline. And a lot of the things that you encounter in Japan feel very familiar on a subcutaneous level. At the mm. same time, it's a very exotic place. It's mm. very different, of course, from Germany. And it's this funny dichotomy between something that is very much like home and something that is completely different, which I find exhilarating. <laughs> I know exactly... I, I've spent some time in Japan and I, and I had exactly the same um, sensation. 
While we're philosophising and talking about sort of broader categories, uh, I read a quote of yours. I'm absolutely certain, you said, that when I die, I will regret not having spent more time with the people I love. We he talked about wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I guess that's the question that um, we have to ask ourselves, uh, or should be asking ourselves probably every, every day, um, is what I'm doing really important to yeah. me and to the, the people that I love and, and who love me? Am I really doing the right thing right now? Or yeah. am I getting obsessed with something that is really not important? And the film business is, of course, very... Uh, um, confusing in that sense because it tends to take things more importantly than they are. Mm, the film business is what the film business is supposed to be. It's a distraction. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, that's interesting. So, but, but, so you, uh, you know that there are lessons to learn but you're not sure that you're learning them. Right. I can only agree. <laughs> You're being so wise. Yes. Uh, at this juncture, let me remind you that there's a Talking Germany website where you'll find all the blogs I've written about my guests, including some off-screen impressions of Doris Sturia. <laughs> if you're into Talking Germany, you can find out more on the internet. Your host, Peter Craven, is keeping a blog on the many shows and guests in the series. Find out more about what happens behind the scenes, gossip, experiences, how the whole show is put together. Just visit blog.dw-world.de slash Talking Germany. And you can tell us what you think about the programme there, too. Time for the Talking Germany traditional quiz. Quick questions, quick answers, please. Do you watch DVDs or do you go to the movies? Both. Spaghetti or sushi? Ah, uh, sushi. What's tougher, directing movies or directing opera? Directing your child. Would you <laughs> rather change the world or win an Oscar? change the world. <laughs> That's our lot with Doris Daria. Very fascinating guest. I've enjoyed our company. I hope you have just as much as I have, if you have. Come back next week. Tschüss. <laughs>